Hello, Skittles here. So far, this year has been a big year full of 20s. I recently turned 21 this year. The channel recently hit 20,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot, by the way, guys. And this year also marks the 20th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise. And with Nintendo and Game Freak going absolutely ballistic with the celebration, what better time than to jump on the party train and take a deep look into the history of the original Pokemon games? Wait, what's that? The game theorists already did a video like this? Well, it's a good thing that everyone knows that I make these videos weeks in advance, otherwise I would have been accused of ripping them off. Well, no sense in pulling out now and ruining the bedspread. Satoshi Tajiri was born on the 28th of August 1965 and grew up in Machida, Tokyo, which at the time was known for its rural atmosphere. Diagnosed with autism as a child, one of his favourite hobbies was collecting bugs, so much so that his classmates nicknamed him Dr. Bug. However, as many urban areas of Japan spread over the land, many bug hunting spots were unfortunate unfortunately lost. Also, here's a fun fact. Ash from the Pokemon anime was written as a parallel to Tajiri as a child, and is even named Satoshi in the official Japanese dub. So with bug hunting now a distant memory for Tajiri, as a teenager he turned to a new pastime, arcade gaming. One of his favourites in particular being Space Invaders. However, due to his newfound fascination with gaming, Tajiri would frequently skip classes and almost didn't graduate high school. He even opted not to attend college, and naturally this all upset his parents a lot. At the age of 17, Tajiri started writing his own gaming-themed magazine called Game Freak. The magazine was written and edited entirely by him, until a man by the name of Ken Sugimori took interest in Game Freak and became involved as an illustrator. Game Freak ran from 1981 to 1986, and during that time several other contributors joined the project. By the end of Game Freak's run, both Tajiri and Sugimori agreed that the next best thing to do was to make their own video game. Game Freak was rebranded as a video game company, and in 1989 they released their very first video game game Quinty, or Mendel Palace as it's known in its English release. During that same year, the Game Boy was released in Japan and the US. Tajiri had an idea for a new game when he saw two Game Boys communicating between one another via the link cable. Inspired from his childhood days of bug hunting, this game would allow players to capture and collect wild creatures, and the Game Boy connectivity would be used to trade creatures with their friends or use them to battle one another. This is the game that would later be known as Pocket Monsters, or more commonly known in its English title as Pokemon. When Tajiri first pitched the idea of Pokemon to Nintendo, they didn't quite understand the concept and the game was initially rejected. However, Shigeru Miyamoto, known for creating Mario and Zelda, took interest in Tajiri's idea and became a mentor of sorts during the creation process. Also, here's another fun fact. Tajiri and Miyamoto working together is directly referenced in the original Pocket Monsters Red and Green games, where the default name for the player is Satoshi and the default name for the rival is Shigeru. Pocket Monsters Red and Green had a development cycle of six years. This is because Game Freak was focusing on developing smaller titles in order to gather the money and resources they needed. These games included Mario and Yoshi, the Japanese exclusive Mario and Wario, Pulse Man, and a bunch of other Japanese games that I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce. But with all the extra money at their side, Game Freak still suffered several financial issues. Their equipment kept breaking down and several employees left. By the end of the development period, Game Freak was almost completely bankrupt, to the point where Tajiri was living off his father's income. It wasn't until they received financial support from Creatures Incorporated that Game Freak was fully able to complete the games at the cost of Creatures Incorporated receiving one third of the franchise rights. And on the 27th, yeah. And on the 27th of February 1996, Pocket Monsters Red and Green versions were released in Japan. But not was all smooth sailing from there. Not only were both versions of the game riddled with various bugs and glitches, the games had a general lack of marketing, and the few media outlets that gave it attention criticised that the Game Boy was already past its prime, and many higher-ups in Nintendo were preemptively branding Pokemon a commercial failure. However, despite all odds, the game sales steadily increased until Pokemon became one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, selling over 20 3 million copies worldwide, making Game Freak and Nintendo untold amounts of money and leaving an unforgettable impact on the gaming industry. When you really think about it, Pokemon was a very risky idea. Considering the several issues throughout development, there was a very high chance that everything could have gone wrong, and it's practically a miracle that Pokemon was even released. Oh wow, me dying actually crashed the game, holy shit. How strong was that fucking Charmander? Having raised an entire generation of children and left its mark on the world, Pokemon has become more popular than ever after 20 years, which is something that most video game franchises cannot claim. Happy anniversary, Pokemon. Here's to the next 20 years.